anything nice, you play it twice. land where we'll never grow old. Tarika McCoy, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for stopping by. Natalie Mayang, never grow old indeed. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Welcome to another Tuesday afternoon right here on Positive Radio 106.9 on the FM band. My name is Donna Moore Stewart and I will be your host for the next couple of hours at the Lemonade Stand this evening. Um, yes, indeed. We're going to be sipping and we're going to be talking tonight. I tell you, God is indeed a good God. Um, Natalie Muyang, my day one is in the house. So we're going to continue to share the broadcast. We're going to continue to invite persons on the broadcast. 
so that no one will miss what we are going to be talking about tonight. I tell you, I tell you, Roxanne Craig, good afternoon. As soon as you join the broadcast, please go ahead and hit that share button. Amen, amen, amen. Hit that share button. God is indeed a good God. And we're going to be here, Roxanne, um, just to talk about some things that will affect you um, because they affected me as well. So it is indeed at the time where we're going to be standing by the lemonade stand. And, you know, I often ask, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Um, what are you drinking? That's the question. What's in a need mug? What's in your mug? Let me come over here so you could see me that I am actually here. Derek Smallwood, good afternoon. Um, Uncle Alan Doyle, thank you very much for coming. Um, and if you're behind the scenes, I'm not seeing you, I tell you. Um, What's going on with Facebook? Because all of the numbers keep to be fluctuating in different places. But to God be the glory, right? To God be the glory, great things he has done. Um, never grow old. You know, the word of God is, will never grow old. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little later on in the broadcast. Let me play this one for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Shattered by a heavy burden. We need a load of guilt, guilt and shame. But then, the hand of Jesus, He touched me, yeah. and now I am no longer the same. Oh, He touched me, He touched me, He touched me, He touched me indeed. Jesus touched me. Um, and we're giving you a chance to interact with us via Facebook or YouTube. So go ahead. You can either thumbs up the blue button, the red button for hearts. If I say something that is funny, you can laugh, right, Uncle Alan? And if I say something that will blow your mind, like, whoa, Auntie Donna, what that? You know, use that whoa button. And if I say something that makes you mad, I want to tell you that you will get over it. So good afternoon to every single one of you on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to the Lemonade Stand. And I want to play the song from the top to give everybody a chance to participate, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, Andrew Thompson. Lord of guilt, guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus, he touched me. Yeah. And now I am no longer the same. Oh, he touched me. He touched me. Jesus touched me. Jesus touched me. And oh, welcome, Kathy Joseph, out of Brooklyn, Sansui Studio Queen. Kathy, dead on, straight on, Kathy. Indeed, the word of God has come to pass. God bless you, Kathy. God bless you for the heart in which you have towards God's people. God bless you, Kathy. Everything is a okay. Let me say good afternoon to you once again as we're about to welcome you to the Lemonade Stand right here in Money Earning Mount Vernon. My name is Donna Moore Stewart, a.k.a. Auntie Donna with the corn color. 
and it is when you will hear um you will see my side you will you will you will be more intimate with me um we will have more personal conversation and then you will see what goes on in this crazy head of mine right so that's what will happen today and Rhonda Ben good afternoon to you my beautiful sister um god bless you rani god bless you benny god bless you so why don't we open up today's broadcast just put in everything in 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 the presence of god or just um giving it all to him give him our best gift give him our best um offering of praise and the way we do that is by communicating with him through prayers right so let us just um get our hearts ready as i take this broadcast and place it in the hands of the lord this afternoon because whatever we do he must be glorified and honor and it must be presented in a way that he is pleased and that he is pleased with us in his sight right so Father God, as I come to you once again, another Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday morning, I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity, Father, to come and speak to my brothers and my sisters and my cousin and some that don't like me too much, Father, may come for talk to them, right? Well, Father God, I ask that the same blessings that you will give to the ones you love, that, you know, and you love all men, I ask that you extend it to those persons who don't really really care for us. Um, Father, as it regards to the equipments that I will use, God, you be the, the person that runs um, through these wires and the airwaves, God. I ask that you will just take full control. And as for my mouth, mighty God, I thank you for it. And God, I, I, I ask that whatever is in my heart um, that is representing you well, that is what should come out of my mouth. And I thank you for each and every person that will participate, whether it be a phone call or a text or a comment in the comment section, God, that there is a special blessing await them, awaiting them. And I leave everything, um, those who are driving around um, and the airwaves, I, I, I greet you well and um, I place you as well in the hands of the Lord. Um, those of you who are on the social spaces, all this prayer is going out to you. And I leave everything in his name and his name only, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only. Amen. 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 Um, Cecilia um, Black Ram, Ran, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Once again, let me take this time out to introduce myself. My name is Donna Stewart, and I'm coming to you out of the studios of Positive Radio. And I, I, I will be with you for a couple of hours this evening. And usually what happens is that we have our, our lemon water. I don't know what you have. Uncle Trevor may have a nice tall glass. My only niece in America may have something sipping on too. I don't know what you're sipping on, but I have a very tall glass tonight. Because I perceive that I'm going to be talking a lot. And I perceive that I'm going to be sipping a lot, right? So just like me, I didn't get a regular glass. I get one of them ninja jar business and it's really huge. And that's what I put it in. I didn't want to get to the fancy one where I have to be pouring into it, pouring into it, you know. I didn't want that. I want one big mug so that and freeze it a little bit so it lasts me for the couple of hours that we're going to be here. So God bless you, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, somebody tag. Um, today actually is, where is she? Let somebody should tag her. Today is Cousin Olive's birthday. Um, guys, can you... Um, you know, see if you can um, send some love out for Cousin Olive. Today is Cousin Olive's birthday and um, she's out of Canada. And, you know, she is one sweet lady. She is one sweet lady. So we want to say happy birthday to Cousin Olive. As soon as I see her on the broadcast, I will, um, I will, um, 
you know, greet her once again. But for now, we're going to be just getting right back to the lemonade stand. And guys, let me start out this way by asking you, what do you feel about um, when, 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 let me ask you, and I needed to participate so that you can motivate me. Two things will motivate me. If you guys start back to me or if you send up some red heart. So if you want me to be energized and motivated, two things you're going to have to do. You will have to send up the red hearts and talk back to me. Right. All right. So let me ask you this question. When something break, break in your house, whether it be a piece of furniture, a vase or anything broken, what do you do with it? Do you try to fix it or do you just throw it out? Can't bother with a broken things. Can't bother. What do you do? That is a question I want to ask Sophia Mullings. When something is broken, what do you do with it? Do you throw it out or, or, or do you attempt to fix it? Um, that is a question I want to ask us tonight. You know, what do we do with broken stuff? Um, and and I don't know what, 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 what do you do with it, but we're going to be talking about brokenness tonight. And also, um, when things are broken, what do you do with it? So keep it locked right here and continue to share the broadcast try to fix she tried to first i love that <music> to you sister rose hyde thank you rhonda rhonda said she tried to fix it first and um and and kathy said if it can be fixed if if it can be fixed i fix it if not i'll throw it out well um i'm, I'm, I'm gonna attempt to change your mindset tonight i'm gonna attempt to change your it depends on what break. Ah, I love that, Sophia. Uh, we're going to be talking about that tonight. We are going to be talking about that this morning because sometimes, you know, most of the times so this broadcast is aired in the morning. So depending on what time you're listening to the broadcast, good morning and good afternoon. So I want to talk and, and you know, this topic came about because as soon as I finished last week's um lemonade stand i ask god to give me new revelation to download new stuff inside of me so that i could take it to you if you guys hear siren it's because where i'm at is so noisy it's 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 just i'm not used to all of this excitement <laughs> we live in a country <laughs> not used to it god help me you know so I'm um, I'm sorry that you will hear in the background um sounds, right? So this topic came about um Sophia because of course you guys know that um you know our house is being constructed, rebuilt, right? And before I even get to the rebuild, um my book that is called Building the Kingdom of God. Um I I want you to know that um, that's not it. That's me and you, Rhonda. What are we doing there? Right here. <laughs> right. My book that is called Building the Kingdom of God. Yes, Sylvester, big up yourself. I wrote this book. I think I started writing this devotion back in 2017. And one of my devotion, it's devotion number five, for those of you who have the book, is called under construction um under construction and it, when i take up this book and i reread what i wrote over over 6 years ago god just continued to to make me smile 
because God was preparing me for a time like this. And I just want to encourage somebody, if you're going through anything that is tough, um, if you can, just think that God has something in the future better for you, that whatever you're going through now will help you in the future. All right. Pastor Francis Manso, good night, good night, good night. Right. And so one of the topics in my book um, is called Under Construction. And of course, you know that we're still um, in the process of of, of constructing but my home. It has been one year, four months, and, and, and a lot of time out of our homes. So therefore, we are in a temporary holding area until our home is completed. Now, it's coming on, you know, I would have wanted it finished last week, but then like everything else, I must put it to God, right? So yesterday, my husband and I, we were inside a house and um, my husband would want to fix a lot of things. You know, he's a perfectionist and, you know, I can't blame him for that. But Yoland um, De Fritz, John, good afternoon. And I have this vase, right? I purchased it years ago. And it it is beautiful. It's it, it's designed really like you would think it's like um, a fish scale. The way it is done, the scales of a fish or how a fish is is that is how um, the outside of the vase is. And some of the scale was falling off because of the material. I think it's like clay or you know some marbly chalky material that it was made of. And so my husband was like, we can fix it. We can fix it. And everything around the house, what he does not want to throw away, he said, we can, we can fix it. We can fix it. And, you know, right there and then the Lord just dropped something in my spirit. And, and this is what I want you to correlate your life and tonight at the Lemonade Stand. Um, Anne-Marie Weisschild, guys, you should be writing up Lemonade at some point in the broadcast, right? No, and then I asked a question. I said, why are we so fixated by fixing things? Why are we so fixated on throwing out things that is broken. Can I say that again, Sophia? Why are we so fixated on fixing broken things? Why are we so fixated on throwing away some things that are broken? And I looked at my husband and I said, no, don't fix it. Don't fix it. I don't want it fixed and we're not throwing it out. I want to keep it just as it is. With its car. With its chip up, chip up self. With its, you know, I don't want to fix it. I want those cars. Those chip up, chip up part of the V's. To remind me of this period in which it was damaged. I don't want to fix it. We fix things because we want it to be whole. We, we prefer to have things holy, perfect. We fix things and we get frustrated when we cannot fix this thing, Kathy. So we throw it away. We toss it away. We don't want to have anything to do with it because it was broken and I kept asking myself and, and I took the vase up Sophia and I and I took it to a part of the house that we were fixing and I'm like you look good right there so you look good right there so yes the land I said the vase look good right there so with the chip up chip up self I said you fit right there so we're not going to throw you away and we're not going to fix you and as I go through my home and I saw normally I would have wanted to throw these things out, I start to look at them in a different light. As Yolanda said, Yolanda said, 
um, that adds character to it. Yes. And as human beings, we don't want to see persons, let persons see that we have been broken. We don't want people to, to see the journey that we have traveled. We don't want to. We want them to see us perfect, perfect. But if you are a child of God and you're listening to me, that is not how the world should see you. The world should not see you altogether. The world should not see you with a perfect curves and whatever. The world needs to see some of your chips, some of your bruises, some of your dent and all of that. The world needs to see that. So that is where I will be taking you tonight on the lemonade stand. And as the song says, there is not one broken vessel that God can't mend. My God, my God. Now, I, um, I want to do a couple of things and I pray that I will just tie it in all together. I'm not sure how it's going to, how it's going to pan out really. Um, maybe the first one is, is, is to, to let, to let you know that God uses broken things, right? So now it's not the vase in my house. We're talking about you and me people, right? Oh, God uses broken things can somebody say lemonade because and then he's um, and depending on you tonight now god uses broken things now when we saw that now when we saw that he did not reveal himself he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of jacob's hip was out of joint oh jesus Ugh. I'm so sorry, guys. Silken Demony, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. Right. Oh, glory be to God. Lemonade this afternoon. Let me can I call somebody in because I tell you the spirit of the Lord is just, just a run rampant about the place. You see me? All right. And I'm a run up and down for me right now, you know. So, anyway, so let's ponder this. Did you know that God likes broken things? Did you know that God likes broken things? People throw broken things away. But God rarely uses anything unless it is first broken. If it breaks first. You all have to help me out. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, um, thank you, Andrea. Did you know that God likes broken things? People throw things away, but God rarely uses anything unless he first breaks it. Let's take the story of David. David said in the Psalms, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Come on now. A broken and a contrite heart. These, oh God, you will not despise. God does not despise brokenness. Glory be to God, Jesus. Some of us are not being used by God because we have never been broken. If God breaks you and you become broken bread and poured out wine, he will use you. Now, God took a little boy's lunch and broke it and he fed the multiple multitude and let me tell you something now we always are walk around perfect when our lips not right we are trying to fix it when our bottom not right we are trying to fix it when our waist and our belly get listen our, our big belly especially for those if you have children trust me that is your 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 brokenness that is your your big belly my big belly is my brokenness and it can't change i could have got a gym how much times a week it just just cho, you understand? Right? So now God took a, a little boy's lunch and he broke it and fed the multi multitude. Mary took an alabaster box of an ointment and broke it and leveled her loved upon the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The prophet Jeremiah said, break up your folly ground. And do not sow among thorns. You'll never have the crop you ought until you put the plow in it. Until the old clogs are broken. Even the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread um, at the Last Supper and said, This is my body which is broken for you. People throw away broken things. God uses broken things. Uh, how are you broken this afternoon? Have any of you been broken? Because we can tell us some, you know, where the song go. My Jesus broke, 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 broke. I hold the song go. Let me see if I find it. Broke it down. I broke it down. I, I must have said go. Let me see if I find it. B R U C K. I don't know. Uh, I forgot the man was saying broke it down. Yes. You understand? You understand? We throw away people who have a little bit of crack on them, whose whose behavior is not up to your par. Who we, we throw away persons? Are we try? No, no, no. We 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 try to fix persons who does not match up to our expectation. We try to redress them so that we can accept them. We try to change their hair so that they can look more. We try to fix the hair, you know. We're talking about the fixing part now, Carletta. You know, we, 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 we try to fix how they speak and not accepting them for their imperfection and knowing that it's their imperfection that makes them special in the sight of God. We try to fix those partners, our husbands and wives, because of something else that we aspired for. We try to fix things. And, and, and as a society, we are fixated on fixing things. We are fixated on fixing people. Now, let me see if I can tie this one in right now because it is important, right? Brokenness. It can mean a lot of things, Rhonda. Good afternoon to you, Sister Doreen Douglas Forbes. Brokenness can mean a lot of, lot of things. It may implies, me, implies messiness or imperfection. It may mean heartbreak because uh, some of us, a heartbreak just break us. And when we are having our broken heart, that is when people throw away. When we're having our broken heart, that is when persons try to fix us. I hope that, you know, my prayer is that you will look at brokenness and um, and, and a little break differently as you move forward um, in this journey. It may it may mean physical weakness. Some of us are weak. We don't have patience with, with people who are a little broken. For some time, it's a reason to demand pity. You know, some people when they break them walk around and make everybody know and them talk and you know, and them complain about them brokenness, boy, this that. No. If you become broken, somebody wrote a song say, I'm gracefully broken. I don't know who sing that song. That's a beautiful song. To be gracefully broken is to accept ourselves exactly at the point of our break. To accept ourselves at the point where we accept all of our broken part and our brokenness. And to the point where if others cannot accept you as this perfectly broken person, that's not your tribe. That is not your tribe. Right? So, but I want to talk specifically about brokenness before God. Right? Brokenness in his eyes is to be broken, to be crushed, 
to be torn in spirit over sin. So a perfect example is 2 Samuel 12 and Psalms 51, where we see that the beauty of brokenness and Psalms 51 is talking about David, you know, when him say, Lord, wash me. Uh, let me, let me just throw it on myself like so. And God just washed me with this up. God this, God that. And I saw David did a guan with himself. You understand? Why then we have to despise the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah's Hittite and the sword of the Amorites are stolen in his wife. Now, this was, you know the story. Everybody know that story, there, right? When David sent out Uriah to, because, you know, because him sin Bathsheba and him one Bathsheba and, you know, one thing led to another and him commit murder. David committed murder. And he got broken in front of God. And he know the evil that he did, Denise. He know the evil, so he has to go to God. And sometimes you see those people that cause you evil, they're broken too. And that just come to me because I know for a fact that that is presence right now. <laughs> and I'm just trying, Carla, tell me, I try my best, you know. Yes. So those persons like David who, who, who did this evil, he was broken and he, thank God he knew God, right? And he cried out and said, I have sinned. David was broken in the presence of the Lord. God, you know, God can use our brokenness. And I, I can tell you over and over that I don't know if when something get break, it just become brand new. Could it be that when we are broken, we become brand new? And I'm reasoning it out as we are talking right now. Um, could it become brand new? Because most of the persons who are gracefully broken and accepting their brokenness and accepting the state of their brokenness, them no look like them get broke, none at all. Them no look like them get cough, cough, none at all. Them don't look like them get box up, none at all. Them don't look like greater run from them screen, none at all. That is the God in which we serve. Carleta, that is, people do your bad. But yet still, it's not showing on you the evil that has been done to you. The reason brokenness is beautiful is because God can use it in your life. And I've often said, get broken in his presence. If you want to experience the fullness of God, Natalie, you must get broken in his presence. It's like a public humiliation of sort, you know, a public humiliation to those who are breaking you, but not in the eyes of God. It's like a public humiliation in the eyes of those who are breaking you, but your brokenness in the eyes of God is something more. Now, brokenness can mean room for a contrite art and repentance to bring us back into fellowship with him when we have miserably failed. Somebody say lemonade. It is not lovely in or in itself. It is not the end of the journey. It is not a cute hashtag to put a picture on a dirty house. It is not a word to use when you want to feel authentic. Standing alone, it is messy and it is sad. No, the beauty in spiritual brokenness is found in where it brings us. And I am sure some of you have your stories about how you become broken. A marriage, a divorce can break somebody. 
um, a child's death, if you're a parent and you lost a child, a child who is sick, these are things that can be broken. But if you know the word of God, Nelly, if you know the word of God, you will understand that even though you are broken, God will use that brokenness. And the brokenness is really and truly a state. It is a state. Some people live there and some people migrate from there. Some people don't want to go there and some people said I'm not leaving there. You understand? So your brokenness is a state. Now, true brokenness is a tool by which God brings his wandering sheep back into his loving heart. I mean, for tell you, God is indeed a good God. Now, I want to pay you to, to go to um, Psalms 101. Sister Shirley Lumley, you're here. God bless you. Psalms 101, you know, because a lot of us are broken. Friends break us. Life breaks us. Co-worker breaks us. Church breaks us. Children breaks us. And the list goes on and on and on on which we can end up into that state of brokenness, right? God do not want you to stay broken. God wants you to accept your state. God wants others to accept your state. You ought to learn to accept the state that a person is in. You have to embrace you 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 have to embrace a person by the state of brokenness that they're in. You cannot fix somebody that is broken. There is no way you can fix. There's no way I can fix. There's no way mama or papa can fix anything that is broken. Because it will never be the same as its original state. If it get broken, like if the vase now get broken, all you have to do like is figure out a way how you can reuse it for something else. Sometimes when you get broken, it is an elevation process, you know. You hear me, Carletta? Sometimes when you get broken, it's an elevation process wherein that you're going to be used for something greater. No, you can be used for more than one thing. You were created for this one thing, but because you get broken, um, you are created, God created you to do something else or to be used some other ways. So, for as high as the heavens are above earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed the transgression from you. God accepts you in your broken state. You must know that. You must not try to seek validation from people, from me when you're broken, from, 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 some, from a friend when you're broken. The only person who can validate your brokenness is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All we have to do is accept the thing for what it is and try and use it for something else. Now, you may feel that something inside you is broken because of your sin or you are blaming yourself and saying you are the cause. You know, you're blaming yourself and that God can't look at you because of it. But can I tell you, God see you as beautiful because Jesus cleansed you 
from all your sins. And as much as it is written in this Bible, or as much as it is written, we still don't believe it because we don't act like it, Sister Anella. We don't act like, like God died for our sin, like Jesus Christ, all my sins has been washed away. We don't act like it. We walk around and we think that he has not forgiven us. This is where somebody will say, the devil is a liar. God says he loves you and he forgives you. Then why are you walking around thinking that, you know, you are not forgiven? And that's one of the problem is because you think that you're not forgiven and Jesus has not forgiven you. You are holding on to somebody else. Unforgiveness. It's a cycle that we find ourselves in because we have been broken. No, your sin will never again be bought up by his. It will never again come back. Consider these words. The distance from the heaven to earth's surface and span the land between the east and the west is vast. By the time the ancient Israel, um, by time of ancient Israel, these distance would have been incomprehensible. These word picture give us just a glimpse of how complete our sins can be removed by the blood of Jesus. Good afternoon to you, um, Kay and Clark. Welcome to the Lemonade Stand. So let the truth that sinks deep inside our soul today and then force us on another thoughts. Your beauty is built from your brokenness. Glory be to God. So why we, we, we are aim on being perfect? Why do we throw people out when we recognize they are broken? Everything that is broken is pleasant in the sight of the Lord, Gayan. Everyone who is broken in, is, 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 is precious into the eyes of of God. Everyone, every bar none. We're not talking about the titles, folks, here because the title folks will never let you know what I'm telling you, right? But I'm just gonna just continue to give you these lessons as we see them, right? Now it may seem impossible, but the master potter hands shared of clay can become a lovely vessel useful for God. And you all know most of my story. Broke me left, right, and center. But yet still, God still have a purpose for me. Good afternoon to you, Donna Lofter. Welcome. Now, transformation from broken to beautiful happens not because of our own effort but because of Christ's work of redemption on the cross. You can identify those persons. Last night, Sheena Powertalk said, it's the encounter. It's the encounter that you receive from Jesus Christ cause you to understand fully that he came on the cross and died for your sins. Forgive you. And you have accepted that. Once you accepted it, that is the encounter that you will have. And then the transformation will start. From your brokenness to beautiful happens. Not because of your own effort, but because Jesus Christ's work of redemption on the cross. He understands what it is like to be human. because. He came human for our sake. Imagine taking a precious vase, and we were talking about a vase, taking a precious vase and using it as a hammer. Now, that's not what it is meant for. It will shatter what beautiful, and, and we will shatter that beautiful creation. Sometimes, despite our effort to protect that vase, it can be shattered by someone else's selfish action. Now imagine God, who created that vase in the first place, 
gently picking it up, the scattered pieces. There is no condemnation in his eyes, only sadness for the brokenness. You think maybe he is going to throw you away or throw away those broken pieces because they are not useful to him anymore. That's what you think. But then, but then, Donna, but then, to your surprise, he lovingly handles each broken pieces, sorting, cleaning, strengthening. You see tears in his eyes for the brokenness, but so much love that it squeezes your heart and you weep. As he touches each pieces, it is transformed into something astonishingly beautiful. That's what God does to you who are broken. That's what God has done to you who have been broken and living a broken life. Sometimes people don't want to hear it or sometimes people don't want to use this language that I'm, I'm living a broken life. Remember what, the, what God says about um, the broken life. I will go through some scripture to, to, for you. You know, we got about 10 more minutes to go on this. Even though you can't quite see the whole design yet, for those of you who are broken, know that God has taken each and every broken part of your story, your price. God has taken every part of your story, your, your priceless vase, and is creating something even more valuable because it has been restored in his hands. We, 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 your story may not be one of brokenness, but God is in the restoring business. He is taking every piece and creating something even more beautiful than you could ever imagine. So let me hear from you. How have you been broken? Who, I mean, the who doesn't matter, but what have you done in your broken state? And I want you to remember this, that in Psalms 51, Verse 17, it says, My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. Did you know that you, you can give God your broken spirit? David says, My sacrifice, O God, is my broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, God, you will not despise. This is David giving God work back to him because God said it, that he will not despise a broken heart. So if you're broken, all you have to do is present yourself as a living sacrifice unto God and he will restore you. And anything can break, you know, Uncle Leroy, Anything can break you. A disaster can break you. A one mis misplaced word from someone can break you. But God says if you give him your spirit, your broken spirit as a sacrifice, he will honor you. And he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up this wound. So don't try to fix things. Don't try to fix things. Accept things the way it comes. And I'm going to tell you this one story as I conclude this, um, 
this piece here. Yesterday, as well as we were back in the house, we were trying to put a mirror into the bathroom, in one of the bathroom. The mirror had some, I, I am one of those girls who like to reuse stuff. I am, I'm that kind of girl. When you grow up in a ghetto, you have to know that. When you grow up in a ghetto, you will take cardboard and you will make figurine and you make all of those things. And, you know, you make do a ghetto thing. You just just get creative once you're in the ghetto, right? I don't know if any ghetto person they hear. So we come from, you know, the inner cities. I am that girl. And so my help, we had this. We didn't want to throw away everything from the destruction. We save a couple of stuff, right? And so there was this mirror um, that we use for something else. And I said to my husband, you can use this and put it in the bathroom. And I have already sized up the length of the place. And in my mind, I do what women does. We already have it here. We measure it out. We figure that's going to be here. This one is going to go there. And so I'm, I'm set with my piece of mirror, you know. As a girl loves to look at herself mm -hmm. and remind herself that she's gorgeous. So this girl loves mirror. So me always I say, hey girl, don't give up, you know. When me pass the mirror, me said, Yeah, go on with yourself, you know, my girl. Yes, me love mirrors. Yes, I do love mirrors because if I don't encourage myself, you know, I would expect it from everybody else. And I'm not gonna do that, right? So I encourage myself. I learn to encourage myself every time I take a glimpse of her, right? So we we see this mirror now right so my husband it has some sides on it some edges on it so my husband is attempting to take the edges off the 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 the, the mirror without breaking it and sure enough the mirror break right and i hear when the spirit of the lord said it is well it is well the mirror broke that means uh, my dream of how the bathroom i'm gonna look just shattered you know and you know, some woman would have get angry and said, you know, this, that, 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 that. I did not do any of that. I was a good wife, right? So my husband measured from the tip of the brokenness to the end, to the the, the good portion of it. When we when we got the measurement, it was like 70 inches, 70 inches across. So I said, you know what? Let us go into the bathroom and take the measurement and see if it still will work, even though you're cutting off almost 12 inches off of it. And people of God, I tell you, you see that 70 inches, that, that piece that was broken and we had to cut that off? The 70 inches is a perfect and a better fit than what it was before. And this is God, I, you know, I tell you. And I, I walk around looking and trying to, I see God in everything. I don't know about you, but I see, I see a message in everything. I see God in everything. I don't look at anything negative. I try to, to, to say, all right, we can get there. So because I want, I'm in a state of peacefulness. I am in that state of peace and I don't want anything to disturb that peace. Furthermore, I don't want anyone to disturb that peace. You understand? Because it's sort of nice right there. Some I take up residence right there in peacefulness. And when my husband measured the, the, the area, it was perfect. What am I saying is sometimes God have to break you to perfection. Do you hear me? Sometimes there are times that God will break you so that you will be perfect for him. There are times when God will break you so that you can be perfect in his sight. You have to know that he heals the broken hearted and bind up all their wounds. And there's several, several, several scriptures in the, in, it is written in the Bible that you can go to if you're feeling broken. Let me encourage you this afternoon not to try and fix our broken situation, not to throw away persons 
and we, we, we can relate it now to people. If I am broken, if in however you can see me broken, don't throw me away. Don't try to fix me. If you can accept me in my broken state, I think we will live good together. I think we can live great together, right? So I want to say this to someone. Why can't you be broken perfectly for you? Sometimes you're broken perfectly just for you. Don't fix me. Accept me for who I am. And that is what we have decided to do, or that's what I have decided to do, is everything that I'm watching around in my house that seems like, you know, with all of this moving, have a little chip, chip, chip. I am not throwing them away and I'm not fixing it. I'm going to have it just like that. And can I tell you? That every piece of things, where is Michelle, Michelle Registy? Every piece of broken particles fits perfectly. Every piece. Every, every vase that is broken have another broken vase that, that is um, another vase that is broken and it blends right in like it was planned. I have such a great testimony I want to share with you at the end of this ordeal. Because really and truly, it's an ordeal. We're just weathering out the storm. We're just weathering out the storm. We just make it look good, Anne-Marie Thomas Harton. And just before I go, I want to read the, the devotion for you. That is from number five in my book, Building the Kingdom of God. And it says, under construction, a work in progress. And the parallel I want to draw is between my physical home and my body, which is the temple of God. I will attempt to share this story with all humility. You know, I decided long ago not to ask or beg God for anything. You see, I mess up each time and I do things on my own. Whether it's choosing friends or places I've chose to go with whom I chose to go with, I mess up big times. If you want to know my life story, read. If you want to know who I really am, devotion number five told you my heart. You haven't had it. And I don't normally come out and promote my book. I don't do that. And God has to tell me how to do this. If you want to really know me, number five. That's really me. Now, so as I said, I have decided long ago not to ask God for anything. And I don't. I don't say, Lord, I want a house. I want a this. I said, whatever you think me deserve, give it to me. I said to God, whatever you think I am deserving, God, give it to me. I am not asking you for anything because like I said to you, I mess up every time I try to do things on my own, whether it is choosing friends and I mess up in that department. I don't choose friends wisely. I don't. I don't know how to do that. Or are the places I go. So I'm careful where I go. And who I go with or who I associate, I mess up big time. Some of these mess I even fought to keep to my detriment. Have you ever had a friend and you know that this friend is not good for you, don't wish you well, and it's everything bad and you're fighting to keep this bad friend in your life? I, met, I used to mess up on that. And so as soon as I recognize something, I take myself away. When I see a behavior in a person's a group or a place, I am quick. I am just like, this is not for me. Got to go, got to go, got to go. No. So I want you to say to yourself tonight, I am under construction. 
And when I wrote this in 2017, I didn't know that I was writing my bio, Cousin Olive, the birthday girl is here. Say to yourself, I am under construction and just put lemonade in it. Now, as a single woman, I want to say God gave me an old, broken down, in need of repair home in 1998. Want to know my story? Bought my first home in 1998. So you have to get the book and then you could sit and go through it. No, I was a single woman and I want to say God gave me an old broken down in need of repair home in 1998. All I wanted was a place to live. I wanted to rent a one bedroom apartment. Then the broker said, why don't you buy this house? Then out of nowhere, I became a homeowner. I hid that fact for a year. You remember them say when you get something, keep your mouth shut? A long time may I do it. I owned my own house for a year before anybody knew that I own my own. And this was in 1998. You want to check almost 30 years ago, right? Uh-huh. Then out of nowhere, I became a homeowner. I became a homeowner. I hid the fact for a year. We read that already. It was that long before anyone knew that I was a homeowner. A homeowner need repairs. All right. The home needed repairs. Windows, floor, bathroom, kitchen, all needed updates. And working with a single woman was a field day for the local contractors. Um, guys, let me play this this message, this song, and have, and come back. To God bless you, God. I will, yes, God bless you. Enjoy your birthday. We celebrated your birthday, Cousin Olive. Let me take the time out to let her see that we were saying happy birthday to her. Keisha Etsy, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Donna is here. Denise is here. Leroy is here. Those of you who are locked on YouTube, I see Natalie Jackson is in the house. Good afternoon to you. Anne-Marie, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. So we will um, wish you happy birthday um, when you come back from off of your thing. Sister Dorothy Reed, love, 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 100%. Uh, 100 percent and i just think that the broadcast is so delayed because of how people are responding to me my god my god my god so i'm going to continue reading this um this book if you don't have it you can try and get it as well let's see is it this one where is my studio that's not it not it that's not it that's not it that's not it. I have no idea where this thing went. There it is. All right. So happy birthday, cousin. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'm sorry, guys. I have to work. I'm working and doing this. So to God be the glory. Now, as I said, as a single woman, the, the, the contractors them had a field day with me. And you know how that is. When you're a single woman and you have some work to be done on your house, um, them just literally rip you one way or the other. You sometimes have to give up and say, you know, but, you know, that was not my case. And then um, I met my husband um, a few years later and, and, and the house, like my body, needed repair 
both needed an overall, a makeover. For two people, I didn't need that much space, and I certainly didn't think I needed a makeover. Over time, God used this house to be a home for many people. Remember, me tell us someone was really section eight at a time. A whole heap of people come to my house and then pass through right there. Some of us, uh, some to this day have not returned to say thanks. Yes, but that was part of the makeover process. To God be the glory. The house had made many rooms and the layout was pre-1970s with minimal closet space. People those days didn't used to have many clothes, it seems. Um, the bathroom were outdated and small. Now, the first construction project was the bathroom makeover. The bathroom, not the kitchen. I don't understand why we chose to make over the bathroom and not the kitchen. But Psalms 51, David says, purge me with isop and I shall be clean. When one body is under construction, when a new bathroom is needed, we need to go deep, the inner core, into the nitty gritty of the temple. So I did a heart and a lungs cleansing and my thoughts had to be renewed. As hard as this medicine hyssop was to endure, it was worth it. When you are taking medicine such as mother herb, it is difficult to swallow. As a child, my baby sister V used to drink mine for me. True story. Lord, I should have drunk my own medicine back then. Somebody say I'm under construction. Then the next, then the next up for construction was the kitchen. Yes, repeat for me the kitchen. Somebody say lemonade. We purchased some new appliances and made them practical and livable. After all that cleaning, we need to replenish the body. After all that washout, you need to replenish your body. After that intensive purging of the inside, we must be mindful of what we are going to feed our body and soul with. The cupboards in the kitchens were changed and we restocked them with different types of food. Somebody say lemonade. The problem and challenge I faced were that I restocked them with the new, I restocked some of the new cabinets with some of the unhealthy food. I just had purged from myself. At this point, I was under construction, yet I was using the same old material to build my new home and my new body. Something is radically wrong with this picture. The next step in the, in the construction progress was to the gutting and removing of the walls and piping and rewiring. Walls divide. Can I tell you that walls divide? To keep people in or out, walls separate, walls are boundaries. So we started tearing some of the old walls down. The walls that were blocking our views and separating us from the things and the people dearest to us. We had to open up walls to allow the element in such as the sunshine within my old body. I had to break down some old habits that needed to be broken down. I had to learn that I can't fix everybody. I had to work on my empathy inside to build my spiritual side. I had to learn that it's okay that I don't have to fit in. I had to learn that it's okay to be different, Rita. 
Oh my goodness. Can I play the song? I have to take this message again. Sorry. my brokenness and my imperfection. Thank you very much for allowing me to work while I do this work. It is indeed work. And I was telling you, I had to learn to fix. I, I had to learn that I can't fix any and everybody. That is something I've learned. I had to work on myself to build my spiritual side. I had to learn that it is okay. Um, that, I don't fit in because we'll talk about that. I had to learn that it's okay to be different. I had to learn that it's okay not to conform to the ignorance of others. I had to learn my, that my renewed mind and body is for the Lord's righteousness. So like my old house, the construction is all on the inside the construction is not yet complete there are obvious signs that the construction is taking place on the inside such as the frequent delivery of materials in the form of studying the word of god the new windows replace the old one which represent the inside and the new views. In some case, the paint on the outside is the last thing that get done. Have you ever passed a home that is being built and, you know, the last thing they do is put on the sidings? Not everyone gets to see the inside of your rebuilt home. Can somebody say lemonade right here, Carletta? When God rebuilt you, from your broken self, from your brokenness, from your broken state. Not everyone gets to see the inside of your rebuilt home. Not everyone gets to sit at your table and dine with you. Not everyone gets to see your new view from your vantage point. And just like the new house, your body, which is the temple of God, changes. Once the Lord dresses you in his favor and new clothing, some people won't be able to recognize the new you. Amen. I must tell you that this was written in 2017. Ever since this has been written, written, of course, you know now that my home, have, have, it's like I'm constantly under construction. I am constantly under construction and, and being built. And this is how every event or challenges or hurdle that comes up, you know, I, I'm constantly like, God, I forgot to build again. Lord, I forgot to build again. The entire house now, all of that newness that we have put in, God has given us a restart. And I love when I wrote, not everyone gets to see on the inside of your rebuilt self. Not everyone gets a chance to sit at your table, your new table that you have fixed. Not everyone get a chance. To just violate you the way they used to. But I can tell you that. When God fix you from your broken state. You are beautiful.
beautifully made, whole, and brand new. And that is my presentation for tonight. I do hope that that you learned something or, you know, I don't know if it makes sense because sometimes I don't know if it makes sense until I go back and listen to it. You know, sometimes I don't. So there is nobody else. Everyone, God will men. Phone lines are open at 718-569-6622. That is 718-569-6622. Once again, 718-569-6622. If you want to call in and share anything with us that you are able to, whether you have been broken and how God has mended you or how God has using your, use your brokenness to help others because that's why he break us, you know. He break us so that he can use us to, 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 to help others. He broke us because he, th- he know you could handle the brokenness. He know you could handle it. And he did just that. Auntie Ruthlin is in the house. God bless you, Auntie Ruthlin. God bless you, Donna Lafter, Leroy Mullings. God bless you for talking of the things them to me. God bless you, um, Andrea, um, Anne Marie. I don't hear from Uncle Trevor. He probably on the second floor working. Is Taylor for you, Anne Marie? Um, yes, indeed. And Auntie, Auntie Ruthin says, Lord, fix whatever is broken in my body and health. Job that me, that my trails keep moving in you, Lord. Amen. Trials? Yes, trials keep moving in you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Time and time again, there is not one broken vessel. The door is open, come on in as you are. Good evening to Maureen Browder, Browder. What remains of your heart? I see the years of fear, the pain on your face. But take a step, enter in. You are safe in this place. You're never too broken to belong. Never too wounded, never too far gone. Here you'll find Jesus and find your home. You're never too broken to belong. You're never too broken to belong. You are never too broken to belong. My God, my God. And when I think about all of the, the, the examples that have been set in the Bible, um, it was the broken people that God used to make significant impact into this world. Those people who were broken. And I see persons who are being broken and complaining. I want you to know that, you know, while you're being broken, broken. All you have to do is just have a new mindset. Have a new mindset, a shift, a renewing mind that, God, you must have break me for something. God, why? I I don't understand. No, Ruth Cooper. But God, why? 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 And he will not answer you because sometimes God keep malice with us. You got to understand that sometimes God just keep malice with us in our routine. Where is Michelle Registy? Let me tag her. I, 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 she may be behind there um, as well. So let me see if I can tag her. I might see Michelle. I don't see her here. I don't see her here. Yes, my God. 
Yeah, so sometimes God just use us for when we are broken, when we are broken. And God just don't talk to us. He will continue being the part of the plan because God recognized that if he should reveal his plan to some of us, we're more that just give us away. Our mouth would have give some of us away, you know. If God should have reveal his, his fullness, the plan that he has for you, you chatty chatty mouth and I make, you know, let me just say you have goat mouth. Yes, you're a chatty chatty mouth. But I make God just change your mind and say, you know, why you chat too much. I'm not going to do it this time. When you learn to keep the secret between you and I, that's why George Banton says, my Jesus and I, we have a good thing going on. My Jesus and I, we have a good thing going on. Good night to you, sister. I said, Brian, good afternoon to you. When God do something for you or when he's working on your behalf, I learned this. I learned this, that I should not reveal it. Because who knows? The Bible said it. The heart of men or women is desperately evil. Not everybody that smiles with you or for you or wants you to elevate. Not everybody. I've learned this. I've learned even that the persons that you help will bring you down. I have learned this. But God will use your broken heart because these are the things that God, and this is how God teach you. You know, I'm at the point where I say, boy, I'm tired, you know, God, me, 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 I learn my lessons now. Me, I learn my lessons. You understand? Me, we listen to you. Me, we listen to you, Father. God, me, me, me no one more beating. Me, no one more beating from your Father. So, me, I, so me, I talk to God, you know. Me, I say, God, me, no one more beating. Come, me, take a beating good, you know. Me, take a beating good, man. When me get beaten, there is no stretch mark. There's no, me, hey, when, when, when me get some beating, where some people beat me, may not even have no effect, no side effect on it. And I'm wondering if that's why them keep a beat me up. You understand, Natalie? Because me not get no wheel up, nor nothing. Now me get some box. Sometimes me get some box. And when me go looking at my face, me say, but, but the face still a go on with itself. But me, me get some good, proper, proper box from some people. So right now, me just say, God, thank you. Me, but I will just... Just anything you say. You know, I'm like that little girl, little girl where I get beaten. <laughs> All right, Jesus. Anything you say, me, I go do it. Anything you say, me, I go do it. Anything you say, me. I mean, this seriously in a true life is me. Is me. You understand? So, I'm afraid. So, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not afraid of God, but I fear who He is because He keeps His word. He keeps his word. Sister Aya said, guys, did I ask you to thumbs up on YouTube? And did I ask you to share the broadcast? I don't think I did. Can we all do that right now? Let me get Olipa shares. You know, let me get Olipa shares, man. May I go on with myself sometimes? All right, guys, the telephone number is 718-569-6622. If you want to call and participate in the broadcast, feel free to do so. Um, if not, I'm going to end the broadcast at 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. tonight. If I don't hear anyone call me, I'm going to end the broadcast at 7 p.m. tonight, right? Because I have, if you notice that I have been taking phone calls, I have not been taking, I've never really taken phone calls on my broadcast. So if you don't talk to me or you don't keep me engaged, I will have to end the broadcast and go run to an appointment, right? And I thank each and every one of you. But let me know, how have you been broken or how have you been using in your broken state? Because I was broken so much. I mean, I've, I've been broken so much so if you see that if you think that god is using me it's because i have been broken and somebody said but auntie donna you know go through somebody something them and me like yeah not because i'm not me not go through it not because i don't speak or i don't use public platform to come and air stuff doesn't mean that i have not gone through it let me take this call good afternoon and welcome through it let me take this call. 
turn your device down for me, please? Good afternoon and welcome. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for sharing. Thanks so much. This is Andrea. Oh, hi, and Andrea. Is, How are indeed, you? Indeed. I am good. I am good. Um, is this positive radio? Huh? I'm sorry. I think I have the wrong number. Oh, hello? No, and oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Andre, you're on the broadcast. If you want to call in, you call the right number. If you were trying to get me in the studio, that's the number to call me in. 718-569-6622. And Anne-Marie said, um, Uncle Trevor, busy today. Oh, you know, same busy, Andre, uh, um, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie? Oh, you know, say Uncle Trevor busy. Mind yourself, you know, Anne-Marie. Guys, did you thumbs up? And let me get this one. Anne Good Marie. afternoon. Yes, You're yes. on the right broadcast, Andrea. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God Go bless ahead, you. God, God bless yes. you. I am enjoying the program. I came home from work and um, I just stood in the car for a minute and... Um, I started, I flipped through the phone and I, on Facebook and I saw you and I said, let me just log in here what's going on. And I ended up staying and cleaning the whole entire garage because I wanted more of what was going on. And um, <laughs> sharing a portion of my brokenness, the last few years of my life has been, it, it's been like a roller coaster. And I went through the death of my mom and in the process of the death of my mom, I would go went through a divorce. And after the divorce, we, I started, um, I helped someone to start a ministry and they turned on me. And after that, I walked out and I said, to God be the glory. I was so broken. But I, you know something? I just stayed at the foot of the cross. I, In all that was going on with me, I stayed stayed with Jesus. I didn't leave him for a moment because I said in the midst of it, I know something good is going to come out of it. And I watched God building my ministry, doing a great work in me and through me for his glory. And now I, um, a couple months ago, I mean, in November, I discovered that I was sick and didn't even know it because I look good. Everything was going on, looking good, feeling good, and all of that, not realizing that I'm carrying, I'm hosting a cyst of nine centimeters um, big, and I had to go through a surgery. But our God is so good, he brought me out of it. And in the midst of bringing me out, he sent his angel to, to, um, to ensure, to tell me personally that everything is going to be okay, that everything is done right. And he sent his word to back it up. And, I, and I'm giving God thanks because even in the, my brokenness, I didn't understand that he, he, he is not going to take away his hands because all of this is for is going to manifest into something greater he placed me into a ministry that is feeding me the word and that the people can appreciate me and the giftings that god has in, 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 entrusted in me he started a foundation in um he said I, on my sick bed he said start a foundation he said, go back to the basis. We, I remember my girlfriend and I, we used to feed the homeless for so many years, for many, many years. But COVID came and we stopped. And um, now we are in different locations. And the Lord, is say, Lord says, start it. Go back to the basis. Your people need, my people need to hear about me. They need, they need to know that I have not forgotten them. So start going back to the shelters, doing the things that's supposed to be done. And it is, it feels good. Amen. You hear my body. He started up this ministry in me and I have this joy and this passion that nobody can take from me. Glory be to God. And I'm so excited that even in the brokenness, yes. 
I hold no one hostage. Come on. I don't hate anyone. I free up myself and I'm at peace with everything. And eat, and I watch me. I lost all this weight and I know I look good. I feel good. And I'm doing what God has me to do. Everything falls in line mm-hmm. once you entrust the brokenness into God's hand right. because he's the master fixer of it all. He is the pattern. We are the clay. So he I, He knows how to mold us and oh. make us the way he wants us Amen. to be. He, he knows how to frame us and right. Because before to, we weren't he has to break you right, to remake you. We weren't frame right so he had to allow some things to happen so that what needs to chip off chip off what needs to come up come up what needs to brighten brighten and then he gets the glory so i give god thanks for tonight for you for for this afternoon for the message that you brought us to let us know that god has not forgotten us even in our brokenness we can trust god with it we can trust god to see us through we can trust god that no matter what storm clouds rise and what billows roll he the light of our Come savior on. will lead us he will carry Come us on. through right through and he's never gonna leave us because he can't go back on his word my god my god my god he can't go back on his word and, and, and he you, put me into is... a place. If if you see the house he put me in, uh, <laughs> I remember I wanted to renovate my home. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Every time I said, "Let us know," let us know. But now, you when you walk know. in my home, I give God glory. My God, because He set me up. Mm. He set me up. Mm. You talk about people coming in and they they, they, they overcharge you. Mm. I have person come in when they work on the outside of my home. They charge me a little bit. Because, but when they came inside the home. Let's see, we're going inside. It's like they take back from all that they did before and did not charge. Mm. I have persons come in and work in my home. And charge me twice the price. And I said, these are my own, my very own, my own church folks. And the rate, the, the, what they charge me, you would never believe it. But all is in God's hand. Amen. I will encourage somebody that is going through. Mm-hmm. Because you started a good work with this topic. Yes. That no matter what it seems like Mm-mm. and where you are today, just know that tomorrow will come. The word of God said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't let go of your night prematurely. Go through your weeping process. Because when tomorrow comes, joy comes with it. And what what joy brings, it brings peace and contentment. Yes, It brings wholeness. Yes. It takes the brokenness and makes it whole. Others might look at it and say, oh, it's broken. But you, in and of yourself, can know that you're whole. Let me tell you, they take out portions of my body, but no one can tell me Come that on. nothing was taken because, guess what? I know what I feel. I know who has redeemed me. I know who has healed me. Amen. I know who has taken me up. Amen. Oh, God Almighty, when the doctor said, if you had kept that thing inside your body for six months, it would have turned into cancer. And if, and if it stayed in your body, within a year, you would die. My God. When Jesus says, yes, it don't matter what anybody say. He's fixing your home to make sure that you are set up. Come on. All those that have passed through, they passed through. My God. You understand me? They went through. They were going through. That was a pit stop. So they can testify. When you stand on the line and say, my home was built in the 70s, at a 70s house, they can say yes, because I went through it and it was this. But they will never see what God has done with the newness, now. with the spinach work. Now. We give God thanks Amen. for our brokenness. We give God thanks for where he has brought us from. Because we have sometimes have to roll back the curtains of memories now and then and let others know where God has brought us from. Mm-hmm. Beloved of God, we give God thanks for you. 
Continue to do what God called you to do. Mm. In Jesus' name, I love you as always. I love you too, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. My God. Amen. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea Thompson, Minister Andrea. God bless you. Um, I tell you, you know, we don't know the, why God is breaking us. You know, and, and, and as we, we've established it around here that our broken, brokenness, our broken state, it can look different from, from every other. But, you know, as, 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 as Andrea shared a portion, portion of her testimony about being broken, about starting this with somebody and, you know, you know, when you start things with people, when you start ministry, when you start a house, when you start a business, somewhere along the line is like something changed and nobody is willing to accept um, responsibilities or, you know, to say, I'm sorry, you know, and especially leaders, they, they have a hard time apologizing for their wrongs and they carry a slew of people with them for some of the things that they have done. But as Andrew said, you know, God is indeed a good God. And, you know, I just love, I, obviously you can see how I love God and I trust God. Um, you know, like Dana would, Dana, Dana laughed out. I said, after nobody no beat you, but you always a smile and you know, make up your face. I said, Dana, if I were to come out here and share some story that took place, um, right here on these broadcasts, you would be amazed. And one of the stories I want to share at the Lemonade Stand to you this night, um, it happened last week. This happened. Is Darnell Moore on the broadcast? This happened last week. Um, this happened last week. And I said I was going to share it with my community. I want to share it with you because it happened last week. Right? Not this one. Let's do this. I tell you, I tell you, I'll be, I be moving stuff all around. Yes. That one. All right. So last week we have, um, I want to, you know, people said, Donna, you don't tell people what goes on behind the scene. I don't because, you know, it's not everything you, you come out and share. Because sometimes when you take, when you share these information, people may think that you're looking clout or, you know, or you want attention, you want views, you want this. And I can honestly tell you I'm comfortable with two. I'm so comfortable speaking to one person. I am more myself when I have a one-on-one. -on -one, and that's why I'm possibly I can think that there's not a lot of persons looking at me, even though there are so many people that are watching my broadcast. I can tell you I'm comfortable just thinking that there's only one person there. And that is how the Lord set my head up. I don't think that is a thousand people there. I don't. I don't think that there's a hundred. I don't even think that there is true. I only think that there's one person in front of me and that's what I have been doing. But in any event, last week we shared this event right here. Um, the Pollyanna Project, we have been um, we have been in inception since 1994, helping children and family across the world at this point. It has been 30 years. Now, after we shared this information, someone from this area, right here, someone from this area or who used to go to this school reached out to my director in Jamaica. And his intention was to get information on the Pollyanna project. So, of course, she gave him the information. Now, ladies and gentlemen, unbeknownst to, to, to her, he was clouting. What he did, what the person says is this. The Pollyanna Project cannot keep any cake sale at this location. That is what the person threatened us. So if you don't think Auntie Donna get it, this is only one of the situations I'm sharing. So he threatened that... If we keep a back-to-school cake sale at this location, he and his crew is going to send a crew of people to come and mash it up. He does not live in Jamaica. He lives in the United States someplace. But he called my director and threatened her that if that's cool or they don't get proceeds 
from this cake sale, they're going to mash it up. You get me? That is what this man says. Now, of course, you know that that did not phase me. It did not phase me. None at all. So, brethren, if you're watching, you did not even, not even my eyelash did bop. Because you can't mash it up. You, may I tell you, you, you may I listen, I'm telling you, you can't do it. May I tell you, say you can't do it. You don't have no power to do that. Now on the flip side of all of this, this is an organization that have been providing for, for them children. But here come some adults who wants to get I don't know what it is they want, but they will mash it up if they don't get the profits from the sale. Now, what are we teaching our children? Because I'm going to be leaving you at seven. What are we teaching our children? I, and I, I hear what you're saying, Sister Dorothy, Dorothy Reed, that, you know, what are we teaching? How, how is it that parents or adults can block can block the progress of a generation by our behavior. And the behavior is not one of good or not one of, of pleasantry. It's a behavior in which you want to cause harm and hurt to others that will deny basic necessity for children of your community that will come and, 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 and lead your community, that will come and, and, and make a difference in this world. How is it that an adult would want to do this or adults would want to do this? Um, <laughs> Debbie, God favor me. Brissett, you're here, sis. I didn't see when you popped on. Shelly is here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, some of the phone not telling us who is here. Shelly Ann is here. I didn't see when Debbie came on. If you're there and I didn't greet you, just know I didn't see you. All right. Now, Dana is saying that they cannot close the door that God has opened and cannot open the door that God has closed. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm telling you that, you know, there are certain persons who, what they do, and somehow, I never mind, but it kind of smell, seriously, because I'm like, I have, I've been told so many people are watching and snooping and nosing around my broadcast to hear what we're going, what I'm going to say as it regards to the Pollyanna Project. And, and I really and truly didn't believe it. Really, I didn't, because I don't think of myself that way. Um... I, I don't think of myself that way. So therefore, when somebody's gonna come and mash this up, me I say, "Wow, it look like me I get big man. Me must I get big? Me must I get big? Yeah, me must I get big because oh, you're gonna mash up something that is going to be helping others. We don't do that. So my friend, I pray that you reach out to me. You, I, I mean, why you call Darnell brethren? You should not have called Darnell man. What make you never call me brother? Me say that deal with you good and proper. You never want a good and proper. But I'm going to tell you something, brethren. You should have called me because I would have deal with you. Nice and proper. Nice and professional. Absolutely. Because we don't know who is, um, who is recording us to play back. Because they're doing that now. They're recording oh, my live broadcast to play back elsewhere. So we ha I have to be mindful of the things that comes out of my mouth. But brethren, you should have called me. And then we would, I would have given you all the answers that you were looking for. Amen. So we thank God for that. So, and it, with, with that says, just know that this cake sale is happening in Jamaica. We have a Sajikor account um, in Jamaica. The bank number is 550-528-6498. If you want to support the, um, the event there, a cake sale, and it's $1,500, which is like 10 US dollars for a slice of cake. And they serve it with peanuts and they serve it with water. So if you want to support, please feel free to do so um, support the Jamaica diaspora so that we can you know build our strength there 
there where, you know, we know we have some rich people in Jamaica. So we want to ensure that, you know, them give us some strength as well down there. So we thank God for that. And do remember before I go that we are going to be having our first fish fry. The Pollyanna Project will be having our first fish fry fundraiser. And this, we are needing book bags. We need backpacks. We need backpacks. We need book bags. I want to thank a, a couple of my friends here. I've been just letting you know how much we appreciate you. Um, we're going to be assigning you pollinators officially. Congrats you for being a pollinator, meaning you're pollinating the world. You're spreading the love that God has given you or God has blessed you with. So therefore, um, we're assigning pollinators as soon as you send your contributions or your donations. I will be putting up some more, especially those who attended the gala um, in, in February. Um, and also, so the, the fish fry is $30 per ticket. I have tickets for sale. It's uh, my, my directors, they kick me out of this planning event. The fundraiser chairperson kicked me out. She does not want me in there. So they gave me some tickets. So may I be going to buy my tickets? I have 30 tickets so far. And I must have sell about five tickets already. So I have 25 tickets for sale. Please reach out to me and let me help me sell off my tickets there. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I want to thank every one of you for joining me this evening right here on Positive Radio 1 6.9. It has been a pleasure just to come and stand by the lemonade stand with you, talk with you, reason with you if you may, um, because that is how brethren should be. We reason one with another. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you join me tomorrow um, with the children on the mix at 3 p.m. to three to six tomorrow where the children from around the world will come in and they will minister to you. Of course, we're not going to end the broadcast without singing happy birthday to cousin Olive. Um, cousin Olive really and truly is one of us. And I definitely want to acknowledge her because she's an awesome individual and I'm not partial because I say she's my cousin, but she's so awesome. Um, I was watching the video I did when I met her for the first time in Jamaica. And there was such a connection between Cousin Olive and myself. Uh, I, and I'm sure she felt it too. It's like, you know, it's just balance off the scale. You know, it just balanced. It was just a balanced meeting. It was a balanced relationship. It, it, no, 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 either side of the scale wasn't going either way. It was just balanced out. And the relationship and how I met Cousin Olive was beautiful. So help me at this time in wishing her a happy birthday from the entire team here on Positive Radio. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Awesome person. We want to say a happy birthday once again to none other but our own Olive is out of Canada. Happy birthday to you. to live a very long and healthy life cousin olive thank you for your support on social media and social spaces this is another person that support almost everybody else um you know she goes around she she she's just an awesome human being i like awesome human being i love awesome human beings i love awesome human beings you know, I'm happy I can say that about you, Cousin Olive. I'm happy I can say that about you. 
truly, I am so happy. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite you back again tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, I have a lot of work to do and um, we're just going to be waiting, um, waiting. Um, and then I will, will reveal as soon as I go, right? So God bless you, everyone. Let me close out with this song for you. Lord, I really love you. Oh, hallelujah. All the things that I've done and hold it to my heart. They're just borrowed. They are not my at Jesus only let me use them to brighten my life. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Well, roll back the curtain of memories now and then. and keep you and may you make his face to shine upon you and give you peace this peace has surpassed it all understanding the peace that the prince of peace left with us is a final parting gift may we learn to hold on to that peace because we're going to need that peace in the time of our brokenness the peace is very important and that's why he left it with us as a final gift because he knows that we will remember sometimes and he ensure that yeah, if we get to the last thing, we won't forget it. So God bless you, everyone, as you continue to share the broadcast, as you continue to enjoy awesome programming from whatever platform that you are viewing from. I want to leave you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and to let you know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. The Lemonade Stand this afternoon is brought to you by Auntie Donna Khan Color. Yes, indeed. And we were talking about brokenness and let you know that don't let anybody try to fix you. Um, don't tell anybody to fix you. You don't want to be fixed. Low you in your brokenness. Low you. Make your steer. Yeah, nobody fix it. And if the vase broke, no, just find a new way, new reason for it. All right. Don't be superstitious now. Because some people said if you have broke this in your house, bad luck are gonna follow you and all of that. But God make bad luck. Okay, I'm telling you that. God make bad luck. So God better than bad luck. You hear me? God better than bad luck. So let's take this one back from the top. I really love you. Oh, thank you, Anne Marie. Uncle Trevor is indeed busy. Mother will be Taj. Everyone, is sometimes this happens when we're all busy, especially when the evenings are so good outside. I don't know. I want my evenings. Uh, I swear, I think I'm going to reclaim back some of my evenings. All right, guys. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Amen. Jesus only let me Well, roll back the curtain of the memories now and then. Lord, show, show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Lord, I am human. And woman, forget so, so remind, remind me, remind me, dear Lord, oh, hallelujah, nothing good 
have I done to deserve your only son? Jesus, I'm not worthy of the nails in your hand. Yet you try the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Why you love me, I don't understand. Lord, I'm asking you, just roll back, roll back the curtain of memories now. And then, Lord, just show me where you brought me from and where I could. Jesus, I am human, and human forgets so Remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Well, I'll just roll back a glory, the curtain of a man. Now, I'll beg up Auntie Dana around the music machine. Hey, Auntie Dana, anything nice you play it twice. Oh, hallelujah. All the things that I've You're listening to positive radio with Auntie Dana. Yeah, man, keep it locked. That will say that. They are not mine at all. Jesus, only let me use them to brighten my life. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. 